Hi guys and welcome to the second in a series of three videos on advanced server tuning for Unraid. Now if you haven't seen the first part then please I suggest you going back and watching that first. Anyway, so let's move on. Now before we move on to more tweaks from here, we have to look at the server as a whole now, especially when it comes to running both VMs and Docker containers together. So let's take a 4 core hyper threaded server as an example. We need to look at our resources. So obviously we have our 4 core CPU. So if when we have 4 cores, why when we make a VM can we see 8 CPUs? Has it magically turned the CPU into an octo core CPU? Well of course not. It's because of hyperthreading. What this is, is basically when a core is able to run two different compute tasks at the same time. And how? Well, because many times a core isn't being used because it's waiting upon a device. On a normal core, other tasks are blocked until the task has completed. But on a hyperthreaded core, it allows another task to use the CPU in between. So basically sharing the same core. Now remember this for later on when we talk about latency. Right, so we've got four cores, each with hyperthreading, therefore allowing two compute tasks per core at once. So basically, eight compute tasks at once can be done on the CPU. So having eight logical CPUs. And so these logical CPUs are presented through the KVM CPU scheduler as eight virtual CPUs to the VM. So with that in mind, let's take our quad-core server setup with one, a Windows Gaming VM and two, the following Docker containers Plex Media Server, Sab NZBD, Sonar and Radar. So this is what's going to be running on this server and the CPU resources that are available to it. But have we forgotten anything? Well yes, the Unraid OS itself. Well, Unraid generally favours low number cores, so let's put it here. So first let's look at our docker containers. The one which will probably use the most resources is Plex, especially if transcoding a few streams. But actually SAB can also spike the CPU usage when it's unpacking files. And docker containers on Unraid are free to use all of the cores. So when there isn't much free resources left, if you're gaming or transcoding streams, then this spike from SAB can cause little blips. Well, we all know that when we make a VM, the Unraid template lets us pin CPUs. Well, we can also do that with Docker containers too. So I think with a four core server, it's good to pin SAP to the first core, not letting it on the others. I personally don't mind if it takes a little longer to unpack a file. But before we do any pinning of cores, we must look at our CPU thread pairings, so we can see how our vCPUs relate to our physical CPUs and we can do this in the tools system devices. Now these pairings are actually different numbers for different core count CPUs. So an octo core CPU would have very different CPU thread pairings to this quad core CPU so it's best not to guess. So for me to pin SAB to the first core I would need to pin it to 0 and 4. And then we do that by adding a line to the docker template hyphen hyphen cpu set hyphen cpus equals and then the number of the cpu so in this case 0 comma 4. okay so just open up the template and we're going to need to click it onto advanced view and then here you can see it says extra parameters and we need to basically put the line into here so again hyphen hyphen CPU set hyphen CPUs equals and then the numbers of the logical cores that you want to assign. So in this case the 0 and the 4. And then just click on to apply and the, and the docker container will be refreshed and then just click done. And now that container is pinned to that one core. The same core that generally Unraid prefers. So what about the other three? Well, Unraid can use any of those cores it wants, and it will do when running other Docker containers. So if we were to run Plex, it can use all four of the cores. And just because we've pinned SAB to the first core, it doesn't stop other processors from being able to use that core that we pinned to SAB. It just locks the pin process to that core. So now our system may run absolutely fine, 
but let's look for a potential problem. We could be transcoding streams on Plex, but when Sav unzips a large file, it could cause like a blip with the stream. So maybe it would be better to pin Plex to the other three cores. And then that way, no applications are overlapping and sharing cores. But obviously we do have to share cores sometimes. Let's take Radar and Sonar. We obviously want them running too, but they don't really use any resources or none to speak of really. So having them unpinned wouldn't be a problem. But if we were to pin them, in this situation, I'd pin them onto the first core. And that's because these containers don't really matter if they take a little bit longer to do something. It won't have any negative effects and it leaves Plex with three free cores. But now when it starts to get interesting is when we put in a VM, especially a gaming VM where performance is really important. Now remember when we were talking about hyperthreads? Well, we pin our virtual CPUs and VMs in pairs to reduce latency. So let's just ignore the Docker containers just for a moment. Now let's say we want to pin four virtual CPUs or two of our cores. Let's look at the pinning part of the VM template. So to pin two cores, we could just go, okay, one, two, three, four. So that's four virtual CPUs, so two cores. But let's look at that closer. So actually, we're using one hyperthread from four cores. And yes, the performance can this can be really good. You'll get a nice pass mark score. But where the problems can arise is when the other hyperthreads get used for something else. Now remember, a hyperthread core just allows two compute tasks to run at once. So if one of these hyperthreads is with a VM and the other is with something else, then latency will happen in a VM due to context switching. And latency is the enemy of any gaming VM. So to avoid this, we'll one, remove anything from this core because Unraid's using it, get rid of this one here, and then we're gonna pin these two hyperthreaded cores. Now don't expect to get the same CPU mark as when pinning one virtual CPU to each of the four separate cores. Now you're only using two cores, but with both hyperthreads. So pinning the same number of virtual CPUs can have different results. Pinning hyperthreaded cores will improve latency. So remember, all vCPUs are not the same. So for this example, I want to have low latency. So I'll pin Windows 10 to two hyperthreaded cores. But wait, but what happens when we bring our Docker containers back? Well, we can see that if both Plex and Windows are running at once, then we're going to have the latency back on Windows 10 and performance will suffer on both Plex and Windows. But then again, if they're not going to be running together, then everything would be fine. We could even give the Windows VM an additional core. We just have to make sure that when the VM is running that we shut down Plex and vice versa. But what if we need both running at once? What then? Well, I don't think we can afford three cores for Plex. Not if we want to run any kind of gaming VM as well. So let's move Plex to the first two cores. Yes, we've got Sab over there on the first, but how often does it unpack files? Hopefully, shouldn't be too much of an issue. And I think it better to have it there with Plex than over on the Windows cores. And talking of the Windows cores, let's put that back to two. And so that's pretty balanced, I think. And the point I'm trying to make is that it's important to look at everything together and also when we use things on the server. Now a nice little tip with Docker containers is this. We can have the same Docker container on our server multiple times and we can pin each instance slightly differently but sharing the same app data. So we can have a Plex container that we use when gaming and this would sit on the first two cores like we have it here. However, when we're not gaming, there are now two free CPU cores. So we shut down this Plex and then open the three core Plex. And now when not gaming, Plex has a lot more resources. So let's have a look at how to do this. Okay, so we've got our Plex here. So let's click on here and then go to edit. And let's click on the advanced view. You can see here we've got the CPU sets pinned to 0, 4, 1 and 5. So that's our two core Plex. So all we have to do is just rename it at the top here and name it Plex and then two core. And if we scroll down here, we can see the mapped drives here. And if we click onto advanced, we can see where the app data is. 
So anyway, just click on to apply, and then done, and then that's renamed this container to Plex2 Core. So now we need to go onto our Apps tab and just type in Plex again and scroll down and find the exact same container and the one I've got here is the bin hex plex so click onto that and then click on here to reinstall but this time we're going to call this plex and then 3 core again we're going to click onto advanced view and in the extra parameters with this time we're going to pin CPUs 1, 5, 2, 6 and 3, 7 and we want to use the same mappings as before and if we scroll down here, look at our app data to check it's in the same place as before. So the app data is still the same place and then we just click apply and then done. And now we've got the two containers, one with two cores and one with three cores. They're just pinned to different cores. So obviously just make sure you never start them both at the same time um, as that would cause an issue. But it's a very useful way to be able to use different resources at different times depending on what your needs are. Right, okay, so that's how we pin containers to cores. But we have other ways of controlling how much CPU resources are used by the container. And one of which is by using this. Again, we add it to the extra parameters box and it's hyphen hyphen CPUs equals and then the number of virtual CPUs you want the container to be able to use. Now this is the CPU usage on my main server when using the container handbrake but with no CPU control. I'm running it just normally. So I have 28 virtual CPUs on this server. So now I'm going to add hyphen hyphen CPUs equals 7 to the extra parameters box. So this will give the resources of 7 virtual CPUs. But you can see here that all the virtual CPUs are still being used. But the overall CPU usage is only 25%. And if you think about it, 7 out of 28 virtual CPUs is 25% of the CPU. And so the container can't use any more than this. Right, so there's two different ways of controlling CPU usage. But now let's compare them side by side by giving both 50% usage of the CPU. But one way is using 50% of all of the cores and the other way is using 100% of half of the cores. OK, so the last thing we'll look at for controlling Docker container resources is setting a limit of memory a container can use. It's doubtful that you'll actually use this, but it's another tool to have in the toolbox. So for example, to limit a container to use no more than one gigabyte of RAM, we would add to the extra parameters hyphen hyphen memory equals 1G. So there are some techniques to tune your Docker containers and you can see how closely Docker containers and VMs can affect each other's performance if we don't look at them together. Well, let's move on and put more of our attention onto the VMs. But we'll look at that in the third and final part of this series. I hope you found some useful tips in this video and if you did then please hit the like button and if you like the channel then please subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next part.